Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, In the Tall Grass. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a simple road trip of two young people. The pregnant girl inside the car starts feeling nauseous. That is why they stop the vehicle for her to vomit. While they have a conversation, they hear a kid screaming help in the tall grass. Wanting to help, they park the car to haul the boy back to safety. To track the kid, the pregnant lady screams, asking the boy if he could hear her. The boy affirms, and says that he has been stuck in the tall grass for days already. The boy is not alone, he is with a woman that has been acting weird. This makes the pregnant lady think about what is happening. Cal goes into the tall grass to rescue the little boy. Without listening to the pregnant lady's suggestion to wait, Cal goes into the deep of the tall grass. The lady quickly follows him while trying to dial the emergency hotline. However, the signal in their area is terrible, which is why it gets disconnected. This is the first mystery of the movie. How could a young kid be stuck with an older woman in the middle of the tall grass for days? Is she abducting him? We are about to figure out why. The two young people did not realize that the field now separated them. The pregnant lady cannot see anything, but tall grass in every direction. The young kid is not responding to their screams anymore. Cal is starting to feel regret once he enters the tall grass. His shoes are starting to get stained by mud, and his vision is blurry because he left his glasses inside the car. Cal and Becky start to feel that there is definitely something wrong with the tall grass. They decide to head back to the road for their safety. However, before doing that, they should locate themselves and be together. Becky has an idea for them to locate each other. She says that they should jump at the same time, and see if they are close enough. At first, Cal is worried because Becky is pregnant, but they do it anyway. On their first jump, they see each other close, so they feel relief. However, they try it again for the second time. This time, strangely, they are nowhere near each other. They become far away from each other without even moving. They are very confused. There is something with this grass, that teleports them to another place without moving. The sun is starting to set, and they are still both separated. Their voice and energy are beginning to wear out. Fortunately, a man comes to Becky. The man's name is Ross. He says that the missing kid and woman are his wife and son. Ross says that to survive, they should stick together. Becky comes with this man, and they find the remaining people stuck in the tall grass. It is already the night, and Cal is still separated from Becky. He is starting to lose hope until the kid, Tobin, comes from behind and approaches him. The kid says that things are easier to find in the tall grass if they are dead, because the field does not move dead things. We now know the catch. Inside the tall grass, they are randomly being moved around the whole field except when they die. The question arises from this, would they successfully meet again while breathing and alive, or would they find each other already dead and cold? Tobin offers Cal to come with him to be able to see his sister, Becky. Tobin says that they could locate people if they had the presence of the rock. Cal comes with the kid. At the same time, Becky and Ross are still finding their way through the tall grass. Tobin leads Cal into the big rock, and as soon as he sees it, the kid touches the rock, and he starts having goosebumps. He asks Cal if he wants to try touching the rock, because he says it must feel good. The rock is massive, and its color is dark. As soon as Cal is about to touch it, he hears Becky scream. Tobin apologizes, and he says that it is too late. Cal goes through the grass in hopes of finding his sister. Tobin tries to stop him, because he knows he cannot find his sister that way, but Cal is already deep in the field. One day, a man wearing a cap comes looking for Becky. At this time, Becky and Cal have been missing from the outside world for a very long time. The man seems like he only cares for Becky, and not Cal or while asking around and driving his car, he notices the red car of Becky and Cal, parked near the church. To make sure it is theirs, he checks the plate number to confirm it. The car is already dusty and worn out. Some insects have already infested the inside. The man goes to the church to search for Becky, but he finds nothing. He goes back to the road, and he sees the book of Becky just lying on the ground, near the tall grass. The man with a cap suspects that Becky might be in the grass so he goes there to investigate it. Like the other people, he is also now stuck in the field. The night has passed, and he still cannot find Becky. While terrified, Tobin finds him. Strangely, Tobin says that they are all connected in the grass. For some reason, Tobin knows the man's name, Travis, and he knows that he has been looking for Becky. Travis asks Tobin if he knows where Becky is. 
Tobin says that he can show Becky to him, but he asks first if he is sure about seeing Becky. Travis insists that he should take him to her. Tobin starts walking, and Travis starts following him. Not long after, they locate Becky lying on the ground, dead and lifeless. In the next scene, strangely, Tobin is shown outside the grass. All are still well, he is with his parents. Tobin says to his mother that someone is shouting in the tall grass and knows his name. Their family dog comes in the tall grass, and Tobin follows it. Distressed, Natalie and Ross, his parents, also come inside the grass to locate their son. This is the reason why Tobin knows Travis. They have met before, and Travis is the one that lured him into the tall grass. The field does not only have the ability to move people, but we find out that it can also manipulate time. Tobin screams, and asks for help to get out of the grass. We are back in the same scene as before. Becky hears him, and she along with her brother, come inside to rescue Tobin. Travis hears the voice of Becky, and starts screaming for her. Both Becky and Cal are confused, and they wonder how Travis also ended up in the field. Tobin screams, and he says that something has killed their family dog. Travis advises Becky and Cal to follow the voice of Tobin for them to meet. The rule of the field is it does not move dead things. That is why they successfully meet each other. Becky asks Travis how he got in the field earlier than she and her brother. They say that everything does not make any sense. The time frame inside the tall grass is now all messed up. The past and the present are intertwined. The four of them teamed up to find their way out. While moving, Becky's cell phone rings, and someone calls her. It is from an unknown person. The stranger says, do not let Cal hurt Travis. Stay by his side. We cannot make the same mistake all over again. Ross, the father of Tobin, finds them, and promises to help them get their way out. He seems to know to get outside of the tall grass. Travis leads them to the big dark rock. Travis says that touching the rock would tell them the way out of the field. However, as soon as Cal is about to touch it, Natalie comes into the scene, and she says that they should not trust Ross. Travis tackles Ross and tells everyone to escape. Ross is clearly overpowering Travis, while Tobin and Natalie run for their lives, Ross catches his wife, Natalie. Ross puts his hands around Natalie's head, putting pressure on it until it pops, leaving Natalie dead. Everyone sees this happening, and they believe that there is definitely something wrong with Ross, and they intend to escape as fast as they can. While escaping, they find an old building that they could use for a temporary shelter. It's inside this building that they process all of their emotions, and what has been happening. Cal blames Travis for all the mess they are experiencing right now. They stop their fighting when they notice that Ross has caught up to them. They go up the stairs to hide on the rooftop. Cal and Travis investigate their location, and they see that the church is near their area. Travis thinks that there is a hole that they could get to escape the field. To inspect for more, Travis leans forward, but he does not find his balance, and he almost falls off the building. Luckily, Cal gets hold of him. However, hatred suddenly comes to Cal's mind. He removes his hand from Travis, making him fall and be injured. Not long after, Ross is now starting to climb the rooftop. While escaping, Becky notices that Travis is missing from their group. She suspects that Cal did something bad to him. Upset, she goes to the grass, and tells her brother to get away from her. Cal starts following her, but Ross has started to catch up. Cal runs as fast as he can, but Ross catches him regardless. Ross tackles him, and chokes him to death. Travis wakes up from the fall, and starts going inside the tall grass. He had a conversation with Becky, saying all of his regrets on why he abandoned her in the first place. While they are talking, Becky screams because Ross has already caught up to her. Worried, Travis starts looking for them. Ross holds Becky so tight, and he is about to assault her sexually. Fortunately, Becky finds scissors, and she stabs him right through Ross' one eye. As Becky is escaping, heavy rain is pouring out. She notices that she is surrounded by naked people who do not have faces. In fact, their head is made out of the grass. Right then, these grass beings carry Becky into the big rock. After so much stress, Becky wakes up as the big rock is faced upon her. Becky takes her cell phone, calls her own phone number, and says she cannot let Cal hurt Travis. This scene explains the phone call from earlier. Becky calls her past self to make sure that they will not commit the same mistake. This is a measure for them not to be stuck in a cyclical nightmare. As obvious as it is, this film is really mind-boggling, as important details are swinging left and right. Travis finds Becky lying on the ground. 
he notices that the baby inside her is already dead. Tobin comes into the scene and says that his father, Ross, has killed the baby. Travis becomes upset and challenges Ross just to finish them off already. While screaming, he finds himself being hit by Ross in the back. The two of them start to fight for their lives. Ross finds a sharp bone underneath the mud, and he intends to use it to kill Travis. Ross punches him and stabs him in the stomach. He says that he only wanted to give them redemption. Travis falls to the ground, and he is slowly dying from the loss of blood. Ross then comes next to his son, Tobin. He carries him, and says that he deserves to touch the rock. As he is about to force his son to touch the rock, Mickey wakes up and stabs his other eye, leaving him blind. Surprisingly, Travis also comes in, and starts banging Ross' head to the rock. Travis then starts strangling him using grass. Travis chokes him harder, leaving Ross out of oxygen and dying. After the fight, Travis realizes that Becky is not breathing anymore. He holds her body as he grieves about the death of the love of his life. Travis has now the temptation to touch the rock. Tobin tries to stop him, but he is unsuccessful. Travis touches it, and his body is starting to have grass on them. Travis is now one with the rock and the tall grass. He knows everything about the field, including how to get out of it. He leads Tobin outside, saying that he deserves to be free. Travis only has one request. He wants Tobin to prevent Becky and Cal from entering the tall grass. In a flash, Tobin finds himself inside the church. Tobin finds Becky and Cal outside, just about to enter the grass. He warns them not to go inside, because they will never get out of it if they do. To be able to have their trust, Tobin shows the necklace he got from Travis. Becky sees the necklace, and she says she has a bad feeling about the grass. That is why she orders Cal to get back inside the car. They take Tobin and drive away, stopping the cyclical trauma that the tall grass gave them. They have become free of the grass, at the expense of Travis being stuck there forever. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.